What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for September 18th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. A couple quick housekeeping notes before we move on with today's episode. New Back to the Future dropped last week. We had a sit down with Ken Avalon of the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. He is the president and one of the co founders. Good time with him just discussing sort of the history of the Hall of Fame, the process, and then we take a look forward to this coming induction class, which takes place November 2nd. Uh, if you want details on tickets or how to get involved, go to their websites. It's all listed in the description on Back to the Future. The best way to stay in the loop with all that, I will say, is to just like and subscribe. That way, whenever things get posted and updated, it comes right to your inbox. Uh, you can do the thing where you get notified as soon as I post something. They'll shoot, shoot the email to you. Best way to stay in the loop because a lot of good things coming on the horizon. We're going to be doing some some work with the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, spotlighting and highlighting some of those things things that they have going on because it's the 20th induction class they also are inducting members in their 20th sport so they're doing a little 20 for 20 action so stay tuned for more on that that's back to the future with a ph also be sure to check out my buddies over at the clashing conferences podcast i'm i'm looking forward to this week's episode especially after the way the nfc east was with the eagles on thursday Washington kind of getting lucky out in Denver. Dak not looking so great against the Jets defense. And then the Giants going down 20 and somehow coming back and and winning that game. Thankfully, since they were my pick for the survivor pool. But be sure to check out the Clashing Conferences podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. It should be a good one this week. And as we get into the season and the trash talk, trash talk starts it should be should be a good one okay phil's tough loss six to five they still took two out of three from the cardinals so it's hard to be upset but i still with the starting pitching walker was a little a little shaky but i i guess if he's going to be your fourth or your fifth starter that's not the end of the world um I, i don't know i feel more comfortable with walker struggling if nola wasn't struggling but I think the way Sanchez has been uh, pitching this year, and Ranger looked awesome the other night, that might help you out. But, I mean, I'm still, I mean, Nola not being able to get past the fourth or fifth inning consistently now is starting to concern me a little bit. However, they they still have a three-and-a-half game lead in the wild card. Three over Arizona. Now it's like the third or fourth team that has taken over that second spot since the Phils have been uh, occupying the first. But, I, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it's going to be, they just need to continue to do what they're going to do. The magic number is 10. They have that series this week against Atlanta, and I don't know what to expect from Atlanta. Are they, like, they're going to be trying to get some guys work. They're trying to stay healthy, and they want to keep guys sharp but not wear them down. So, are we going to see more in the bullpen? Are we going to see a, a, a different mix of lineup? It's hard to tell, but for the Phils, they need to take two of three and just keep adding to that lead. And like I said, whittle away that magic number. I would love to see that under under 10 and be in single digits as we come on the air tomorrow. Uh, but we'll, we will see how it goes. Like I said, I mean, it's hard to tell what Atlanta is going to do because they're not going to be worried about winning the game. They're going to be working on things. So it's it's a good, good opportunity for the Phillies to take advantage of. So I'm hopeful and cautiously optimistic that they will do that. Uh, Charlie Manuel update that he, apparently his family said he is progressing nicely. Uh, but we want to continue to just send thoughts and prayers out to Charlie and uh, wish him a speedy re- and fast or speedy and full recovery from the stroke and then whatever uh, procedure that he had had was in the hospital to get work on but it does seem that uh, things are turning around and things are looking better for him Uh, if you want more phillies coverage check out 2008 phils all the information you need the to sign up is in the description they are currently offering subscriptions for this day in philly sports history listeners for 75 percent off get your full access to the site the 2008 world series championship shirt 
You get access to tickets and memorabilia giveaways, autographs, things like that. And then 2008 Phils will follow your Twitter account, and it's well worth it. I, I keep mentioning following him as well. It's it's very good. It's 2008 Phils with a Z. All for just $2 a month, $20 for the year. All the, the information you need is in the description wherever you're watching this. All right, not really any update on the Eagles. They've had a couple days off, uh, still waiting to see what Howie's next move might be as far as the secondary and replacing um, Avante. However, I will say after watching the games yesterday, and I mean, we went and made a scarecrow, and so I only was catching some of the early games. But I, my takeaway is the Eagles aren't in that bad of shape. I mean, a lot of the, the teams that were expected to be good have kind of gotten off to slow starts like in Kansas City, Buffalo, Cincinnati's 0-2. So I think the fact that we have struggled and not looked our best and are still 2-0, I think bodes well for us. And again, I said it yesterday, there's 11 days now, 10, um, to get ready for that Monday night game. So I'm, I'm confident that the, the coaching staff will get that taken care of. But it was, I don't want to, I don't know if it's, encouraging is the right word but it's nice to see other teams are struggling like the eagles and we'll kind of leave it at that uh they're not the only ones that are not hitting on all cylinders yet and i think a lot of that is due to the preseason schedules and training camp and what they can and can't do uh, i look i look for them to come out now week three is usually when you start seeing the the teams start to get together because it's almost like that second third fourth preseason game would be so i look for next week you're really going to start to see what what things look like but no need to panic the eagles are 2-0 and a lot of other teams look crappy too and they aren't 2-0 you know who's always undefeated phillygoat.com go to philly goat for all your philadelphia sports apparel needs uh, whether it's getting ready for Sixers and Flyers season, the Phillies or Union playoff runs, or you just want to get a Kelly Green hoodie. It was chilly the other morning. It was flat out chilly. It was nice. I had the long sleeve on. Uh, can't wait to, to get, I'm going to order it, but get one of those fly hoodies um, and just be able to just be nice and, and warm and drink your coffee outside. Uh, but Go to phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery. They have everything you need. I told you the story about my buddy looking for baby clothes, and Pat Burrell is my biological father. That's the kind of stuff. Just go check it out. Everything you need, all sizes, all colors, and make sure to use that promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. You guys have been doing a phenomenal job. It seems like every week or so uh, I'm getting notification that you guys are buying shirts. So continue, continue, continue to do it. They're always coming out with new shirts as well. So sign up and subscribe to whatever uh, newsletter they have. You'll you'll at least once a, once a, every two weeks or so they're they're issuing new shirts so check that out use that promo code uh hook us all up and i mean on top of it you're getting great great clothes and great shirts for 10 percent off so go to phillygoat.com use the promo code jim montgomery for 10 percent off of your order okay we, today we're gonna go back to 1971 and on this day, the Phillies beat the Cubs 4-3 to in 12 innings. We've talked a lot about Rick Wise and that 1971 season and possibly the greatest season of his career. Uh, he had, had a no-hitter in a ga game in which he hit two home runs. He had another game that year in which he hit two home runs. On this day, he went all 12 innings. He gave up three runs in the first two innings. And then didn't give up another base runner until Ron Santo uh, singled with two outs in the tw top of the 12th inning. That was 32 consecutive outs he recorded. So two rough first two innings, and then he went 10 more innings without, or almost 10 innings without giving up another uh Another base runner, so 32 consecutive outs. The record, in case you're wondering, for most consecutive outs is Mark Burley, who did it in 2009 with 45. Uh, but going back to Rick Wise in this 1971 season, he wasn't done in this game. Oh, no. He got the 32 consecutive outs and then went three for six at the plate, including knocking in the game-winning run. And I think, like I said, that was hands down his greatest season and led the to the trade 
for Steve Carlton. And that might be a future Back to the Future episode where these two guys were at similar spots in their career. Could Rick Wise had been Steve Carlton if he stayed? But on this day, it was the Phillies beating the Cubs in 12 innings, 4-3. to three. Rick Wise went all 12 innings, at one point retired 32 consecutive batters, and then hit the game-winning, or hit the knocked in the game-winning run for himself. And and honestly, I mean, it's just crazy to me that he had two two home run games, a no hitter, 32 consecutive outs. What a year 1971 was for for Rick Wise. And then he was greeted promptly in 1972 with a trade. Uh, but more on that coming up okay time for who wore it best and for the second time in a couple days not one person got the the uh 50 of the vote uh mark recce did wear number eight best according to you the listeners at 42 percent of the vote bob boom was right there there was a lot of love for shane victorino as well um uh, no love for aaron mckee but that's okay but it was mark recce and i i, I think that's a a solid pick and it's amazing to me with all the guys and all the great numbers we've had this is a few flyers now are winning these these number battles and i i think it's a testament to that franchise and just how much there are how much history there is there and how good they are so hopefully that's going to lead now to them danny briere and the team getting them better but today this is one I've gotten a few requests for, um, and it, it, it's been on the, the list. I did a randomized thing, but today is a doozy, uh, and it's going to be number 10. And currently, the only current player wearing number 10 is JT Real Muto. Other notables to wear it, Matt Collins, Gardner Minshew. Um, would love to have him back as our backup quarterback over well, who we got, but that's... Neither here nor there. Coy Detmer, that's who I would love to have as a backup quarterback. Putter John Telschik, Bill Clement, and Ben Francisco. And all of those guys were, were good at various spots and, and games in their career. But we have five now today. And this is the one of the few times we're going to have five because that's just how good this number is. First, we're going to go with Deshaun Jackson, who still to this day, I said, I feel should never have been released by Chip Kelly. And it's one of those things that still just blows my mind to this day. Then we have a couple of Phillies. We have fan favorites uh, from the 93 team, Darren Dalton, kind of the heart and soul of the 93 Phillies. Uh, longtime Philly, bad knees, uh, just one of the class acts, uh, unfortunately passed away due to brain cancer. But just the catalyst of, the, of that 93 team. And again, fan favorites. I know the ladies out there loved him. The other number 10 also has a connection to that 93 team as one of the coaches, I believe. But Larry Boa, shortstop for the 1980 World Championship Phillies. Another longtime Philly. He came in, a longtime coach, manager, still involved with the team. Another great guy, fan favorite. John LeClaire of the Flyers, one a member of the Legion of Doom line, one of the best to ever put on the orange and black. Uh, long again, longtime Flyer, and um, came over in a trade, I believe, from Montreal. So, John LeClaire, another fan favorite and, and pe- one that people loved. And finally, the only guy that has his number retired by the team. Uh, and is a Hall of Famer, Mo Cheeks, point guard for the 83 Sixers. One of, again, the best to ever do it. Came back and, and coached the Sixers for a little bit. But what a list we have for number 10. It's your turn. Who wore number 10 best? Is it Deshaun? Is it Dalton? Is it Larry Boa? Is it John LeClaire? Or is it Mo Cheeks? I don't envy you to have to make this decision decision but make sure to get the the vote to me wherever you're you're listening to this leave a comment if you're on spotify the the poll will be there send me a message don't send smoke signals today it's raining but let me know who wore number 10 best is it deshaun dutch boa john leclaire or mo cheeks fills in action tonight against the braves looking to whittle away that magic number 
Still wait, waiting to see what the or the Phillies do with, um, or not the Phillies, the Eagles do with their secondary. I'm, I'm sure Howie is working the phones as we speak. But it's going to be kind of a rainy day. I think it's going to clear up, though. So if you can, go out and enjoy your Monday. On this day, back in 1971, Rick Wise retired 32 consecutive Cubs and then knocked in the game-winning run for a complete game, 12-inning win for the Phillies. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Monday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.